Hello again. Um, this is Miles Cosmo, and here I am back in my studio as always. Um, this time I've got my Novation circuit here. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video on it, and I've been wanting to do one for a little while, but I kind of wanted to figure out what I wanted to do, A, with the video, but also with the circuit itself, because I've sort of been putting it off for a long time, um, in setting it up in a way which I want to set it up. So what I've done is I've got is I've got 32 uh, of my own patches loaded in here. Actually, it might be slightly more than 32. Um, it's not the full 64 patches available, but 32 is plenty. And I basically just went through and made a whole bunch of patches, um, and I and I set up macros as well, and and I sort of. I kind of standardized the macros a little bit, like this knob is always cut off and this knob is always resonance, although sometimes resonance does a little bit of extra stuff and maybe sometimes cut off does a little bit of extra stuff, but those two are always that. And, and this one in a lot of patches is uh, LFO rate, that's in a lot of patches is LFO depth, that's attack and release in almost all of the patches, but again, some of them are different. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to set up that kind of standardization um, and also make a bunch of patches uh, that I would like to use and that when I load up the patches I can use the macros to edit them in the way which I generally like to edit sounds. So at the moment I can just sort of Now, one thing that the circuit weirdly did when I was saving these patches is it made, made it so every single patch, the release knob is up quite high. I don't know why I did that, because I would always turn it down and then save it again, but it didn't matter. It would always do that, and it always um, saves the cutoff knob at nothing, which is also weird, because on some of the patches, I didn't want it there. So, for every single patch, I have to immediately do a little bit of tweaking, usually, to get them sort of where I want. But the other thing I did is um is I added some samples and I just I plucked these samples out of um the native instruments battery for samples um which they're just WAV files you can just grab them out of the library um I also loaded a bunch of these samples into my Digitact although a lot of the ones I put in the Digitact were actual drum sounds whereas on here they are I also added two kick drums because that was all I could fit. None of these ones here have any samples on them. I think that's just like a placeholder sample that they put in there so that like you know sound is coming out. Which is actually, in a way, it's kind of a helpful sound. But the my samples and or the ones I loaded in end here, and I only had room for two kick drums. And I just thought it's well, it's helpful to have kick drums, even if I'm planning to use this in conjunction with other drum machines. So I've got like a thick kind of 808, 909 sort of sound there, and then I've got this 707. I really like the 707 kick drums. But let's go back to the synths, um, and let's explore some of the sounds I made. So start with this first one. on this knob. So it's just worth pointing out that the 
circuit sounds really good. Um, I mean, like it goes without saying, I think it's just a really nice sounding synth engine. Um, but th like, this is just one oscillator and it just sounds really big. Um, so at the moment, you know, I just did some tweaking and brought the filter up and did some pulse width modulation on it. Uh, which is what this LFO depth is doing. And you can get some really crazy sounds if I bring up the um, the speed of the LFO. So anyway, that's like one sound, single oscillator, very simple sound, there's not a lot going on there, but it still sounds amazing. So the, but the first few sounds I, I made are all kind of derived from the same patch. Um, they sort of just, I just sort of um, edited small things on them, like the waveforms I'm using and stuff like that. So they'll probably all sound a bit similar. get the idea there. Really nice delicate sounds. Nice bit of wavetable. So these are the kind of sounds I like to do on the circuit, you know, really wavetable-y, drifty sounds. Um, let's keep exploring. And let's add some effects while we're here as well. Just because the effects on the circuit are quite nice. Thank you. 
And even these softer sounds with the filter down are really nice. Especially with the reverb and the delay. As you can probably tell, a bunch of these sound quite similar. <clears throat> the main difference between a lot of them is uh, difference in waveforms and stuff like that, just different um, timbres and stuff. Um, but like, I, I then make different sounds, <laughs> of course, <laughs> and like there's bass lines and stuff like that, and just or just like a lot of them are quite sound designing, I think, because I want to, this machine to be more of a uh, I wanted to use it more melodically um, and more synth, synthy, um, so it can pair up well with other more drum focused machines like the Digitact. So. So, this one, I, I changed things up quite a bit. Uh, this knob changes tunings of the two oscillators. So we go from this. To this. Let's see what these other knobs do. So as you can see, you can just get wild with it, like this uh, parameter, or these two parameters are controlling um, some really wacky LFO antics, um, two different LFOs interacting with each other with different, uh, different shapes and different rates um, and affecting different things, uh, like I believe that it affects things like partially the filter but also partially things like the, um, the sink and um, what else? God, I can't even remember. Let's go to the next one.
So I just really like those kind of sounds, like little plucky, kind of squelchy, uh, lots of animation, lots of texture. Um, but things get <clears throat> a lot more aggressive as we go through. Let's, uh, let's maybe skip some of them. Let's try this one. to two oscillator territory. In fact, we were in two oscillator territory before, but um, we we start we graduated to the, the second oscillator. But this is where this patch is just a huge pad, you know, like uh, two oscillators detuned tuned from each other. But then each of those oscillators um, have like a super sore thing going. Um, <clears throat> you can just end up with just crazy huge sounds. <laughs> distortion. from blissful to completely hellish and I love it. Let's try this next one. I 
mean, things can get quite analog sounding if you want them to, you know, like. I mean, you'd hope so, it is a sort of virtual analog synth, but it's, you know, got all the wavetable stuff as well. see the scope of sounds that I've tried to make here. I've tried to make it so each sound you can really take it in different directions, uh, like it starts as a bass type of note, uh, from a bass point I should say, and you can really just take it into wild directions. I, I kind of wanted it to be experimental and fun to play with, and obviously the, the patches that come with the circuit try to do the same thing, but a lot of them just aren't to my taste, so I tried to sort of, um, you know, make stuff that is. Um, so let's keep going, have a listen to more of these. <laughs> So these ones all sort of fall into a similar uh, style, as you can tell. <laughs> they all kind of do similar things. Maybe I'll, as I sort of work on this, I'll expand this patch bank to be less repetitive. Um, <clears throat> but I still think each sound has its own unique thing. What is this one? Um, 
So the cool thing about the circuits uh, LFOs is that they have heaps of different shapes. Like they've got all your standard shapes, but they've also got like various um, arpeggiated sort of shapes, like sequenced shapes. And it's really handy just for getting kind of arpeggio style sounds from a synth that just does not have an arpeggiator. Obviously you can get also get arpeggio style sounds by just using the sequencer. But I think the point I'm trying to make is you can get rhythmic... Um, I mean, they're LFO sounds, but they're just really interesting ones. Uh, lots of different variation. I think you can hear here, you know, like listen to this sound, you know. I mean, like obviously it's got a sort of sample and hold vibe to it, but it's it's more repetitive, it's more predictable, um, it's sequenced, you know, and I think that that's quite cool. Um, you know, more, it, it's like, a, it's basically like uh, using the LFO as a, um, a step sequencer, effectively, I think. I believe this is a band pass filter. So that's really nice. What else have we got? That's a really nice sort of gated sound, which uh, basically is using the pulse width modulation of a square wave to get that, you know, going to zero on the pulse width um, rhythmic effect, which I just think that's a really nice sound. Um, <clears throat>
So unlike before, where the LFO on this knob uh, was, well, the LFO rate on this knob um, was just controlling the LFO rate. Now it is still doing the same thing, but the um, LFO rate is being synced to different um, intervals. So you get, you know, it just flicks between them rather than, you know, sweeps smoothly through the rate, um, which basically just means you get sort of interesting fucked up sounds as you sweep through the different LFO speeds. sequence um, to get real unpredictable stuff out of a, a machine that is you know it's a step sequencer um, and, it, and it's very very rhythmic and very loopy but this is going to mean these kind of sounds you know you can turn it into something more dramatic and more experimental and I just think that's really cool like to unlocking the circuit with the editor and just really going to town with um, sound design is just it's just a lot of fun it really sucks that you have to use the editor like it'd be cool <clears throat> not that I have an iPad but it would be cool if you had like an iPad app or something just sat right next to it or a phone app that would be rad too um, the fact that you have to plug it into your computer is a little bit of a shame, but it's worth it, I think, um, to put the time and effort in. Um, so what else have we got? I should probably stop this video in a minute. conventional pad sound I guess but with still with the access to the crazy elements back in.
so anyway, <clears throat> I made some patches. There they are. <laughs> maybe you like them. Maybe you don't. I don't fucking know. Maybe if enough people tell me they like them, maybe I'll give it away for free. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to give these samples away. Well, I could give them away for free, I suppose. Who the fuck cares? Nobody's going to know. Um, but let's go through some of these just while we're at it. Um, let's go back. Like, these two are pretty cool, right? And if we add effects on them, what do we get? Um... slightly annoying. I can't change the tempo because it's synced to Ableton, but that's fine. Let's, uh, let's go through this anyway.
fly jam. Um, <clears throat> quite good, actually. Maybe I'll use it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Every time I use the circuit, something pretty cool falls out of it. So, you know, I, I almost feel like every, nothing is precious on the circuit. It's just like you just use it and cool stuff happens. Um, so that's going to do it. Um, I've just been rambling and playing around with this thing for fucking 50 minutes. So I'm going to stop. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, tell me what you think. And if you like the sounds, I'm happy to make more of them. I like making sounds for the circuit. Um, so anyway... Uh, like and subscribe to my channel um, I'd really appreciate it and also just tell me what you think and I'll catch you on the next time I sit here and talk about bullshit <clears throat> peace out <laughs>